This month of, of November, we want to look into our relationship again. Because relationship is everything. The mic that I'm holding in my hand, you see, you didn't see any cord. But there is a relationship with this mic and something at the back. If they unplug the relationship, the connection, it's not of use anymore. There is things for you to rise in destiny, for you to be able to fulfill your destiny. There is what we call relationship. And the, today I'm starting with building a healthy relationship with God. Building a healthy relationship with God. Um, I find that many church members come and build a bad relationship with God. Um, we take what we want to take from him and we, we just squeeze, we move. We come, we take what we want, we tell him our problem, we tell him our issue. God also has issues. I you know that God also has problems. He has problems. And the reason why he created it is because there are some problems he can't solve that he wants you to solve. And many times he saved you and delivered you. And you just thought everything is about yourself. You just keep on talking about yourself. Lord, give me this. And God said, what about the reason why I send you to the world? And he said, God, I still need to marry. No, it's not marry. Why the reason why I send you to the world? There are people that are perishing that I want you to save. You are so selfish. Now tell the person you are not selfish. Tell the person beside you. Tell the person beside you. How many people do you preach to this week? <laughs> you, you know you didn't preach to anybody this week. Even to yourself, you didn't preach to yourself this week. How many people opened their Bible this week? <laughs> you can see the hand. Some of you did not even preach to yourself this week. And so we're talking about building a healthy relationship. And I'm reading from the book of 1 John chapter 3, 1 John 3 verse 18. Look at it. I said, dear children, let us not love with words and tongue, but with actions and truth. Uh, this is John that is talking here. And you know, we have two John in the Bible. Yeah, I told people in the first service, there are two John in the Bible. One is John the Baptist that Jesus went to pick. This one is John the Beloved. This is his blood brother that, give birth, that Mary gave birth to. And uh, he's called the Beloved One. You know, when he was dying, he said, Mother, look at your son. Son, look at your mother. He's talking to John. Now, it was hard for this guy to die. They want to kill him. They couldn't kill him. They put him in an oil, hot oil. He didn't die. They dragged him in all over the Greeks. He didn't die. They took him to the Valley of Patmos. Maybe he's going to die. He didn't die. He keep on seeing heaven. So till he's the only one that died whole, that they didn't kill any other. All the, all the disciples, the one they cut their head, the one they nailed, but he didn't die. But it, so he, he saw some difficult thing. He was able to see some bad thing on half. He, he knows God. He's his brother. You're able to see that this man came real time. How important know what's happening around us. And he knows what we call love. Love is a very tough word. And everything about relationship is about love. You don't join a relationship, don't join with someone that you don't love. Sometimes you love certain things that make you to join in relation with people. And um, you join business with people because you love the money that will come from it. Sometimes not because you love the person. Um, yeah, you, something must bring you down. And in marriage also, some people join. Not all marriage is with love. Uh, some join because I'm going to gain something. Uh, most people join. Some people, only few people. Some people is by selfish interest. So. Some people marry because to correct some error in their life. But some people are very dark, so they need to light up. Uh, so. But said, dear children, let us not love with words or tongues, but with action. Action and what's in truth. And I, I want to let you know that every true relationship is based on love. Every true relationship is based on love. And love is very hard. That is why it says something in the book of John chapter 15 verse 13. It said, greater love at no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Love makes you to lay down your life. Love makes you to give what you can't even give. Love is so powerful. So in building a relationship with God requires a lot of work. And I want to tell you, if you have to build a house, there are some things you need in your life. You need a land. You want to build a house? You need what? A land. What else do you need? You need a plan. You need a plan because the moment you buy land, and I want to say this, I don't know some of you that doesn't know much about land. 
Uh, the house you want to build on the land you want to buy, from my little experience now, when I'm buying land from people, I ask them, is the place a high density area or low density area? Because the density area determines the type of house you want to build. If it's a water area, which is low density area, you will spend much money on the foundation. If the house is going to the third or fourth story building, but if it's a high density area, you can build, they will tell you you can build anything. But if low density area, government will give you specification. Uh, you can build more than two story here. If you go, you need a strong foundation. So it depends on how you prepare your land. And the land is your heart. Your hand is your life. That is why sometimes when young people enter into relationship and they didn't prepare their heart very well, the land very well, and make it fortify, make it strong, they allow anything to just grade on the land. Their land, their heart is broken, and they said, "So it broke my heart." And sometimes when the heart is broken, to be put in the pieces. No, when you break something, sometimes it doesn't come easy. <laughs> well, no, I'm not talking my marriage today. So, so, so you need land to build. You need plan to build. You need a contractor to build. You can't build it yourself. You need materials to build. Now, that is where I came now. Then I'm a contractor. Now, what contractor does is to tell you the type of material you will need for this foundation. A contractor will guide you how to build it. You, you want a very big living room. Contractor will tell you what type of material you want to use. So well, I'm a contractor this morning and to talk to you about some things. And you need materials. But I can't prepare the land for you. You are the one to prepare your heart to build the house. If the heart is not properly prepared, the house you want to build on it will not be good. Before you join and building a relationship with God, a lot of things need to be done. So the moment all these things are available, the material is available, the first thing you want to do when you want to start building now is to build the foundation. And we want to talk about the foundation. The reason why many of us are where we are is because the foundation we build in the relationship we get into is not that strong. But can we restore it back if we can fortify it? So we need to build a good foundation. And there is a plan in the mind of God for your life. There is a plan. You don't need an architect anymore. There's a plan in the word of God. He said in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, he said, I know the plan that I have towards you. And he specified the three plans. Very important, if you want to build a house, three plans are very important. Uh, plan of peace. Why do you want to build the house? F because of peace. B the way you build your house determines how, what you want to do in that house. Peace. The third thing is that I don't want you to experience evil. You are not paying rent anymore. You are, you are living in your own house. You are not spending money anyhow. Anyhow, you are not just paying rent to somebody that is just gashing in your money. And the last one is your expected end. You, that, the plan is available in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. There is plan. So you need to have plan and the plan is available to you. And for us to build, for us to have this healthy relationship with God, we need to construct it. So what do we need to start this healthy relationship? Number one is our foundation. And the first material you need for the foundation is the word of God. Tell somebody the word of God. Say that the word of God. Tell somebody it's not the word of man. Many of you, you exalt the word of man to word of God than word of God. Now, the word of God is more important. It's not just word. John 1, 1 said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word himself is what? Now, God is the word. It's not just anything. The word of God, you are, many of you have valuable instruments in your hand and you are not using it. The word of God is powerful. The Bible said it can pierce through two, it's like a two-edged sword that can pierce through the bone. The word of God can do anything. The word of God can make you strong. That's what he said. He said the same was what in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made. That means he knows your beginning, he knows your end. That means he can, he, he can restructure your destiny if there's error, if there's mistakes. He can amend your life. And now listen to what John said to us in the book of Acts. Peter says in the book of Acts to us, which I want us to look into. The book of Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Acts 20, 20, 32. I want us to look through the word of God. He said, and now, my brethren, I commend you to God. If you have to build relationship with this God, I have to release you to, you, to him. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. You need God 
and the word of his grace. Because to build anything is not easy. To build your destiny is not easy. To make it in life is not easy. And I, I just said something, and you had a testimony. A lady just woke, woke up in the morning, and you found out you can't walk. She can't walk anymore. Uh, it's by God that you're able to wake up. So it's one thing he said, you need the grace of his word so that you can be able to achieve the building you want to build with God. Now, what is grace? Grace is God, good, giving blessing without your own input. They said it's an unmerited favor from God. Grace is very important. Grace cover your error and color it and make it beautiful. You need grace because you are weak in your own strength. So you can't live anyhow. Because you need the dark God, you can't live anyhow. There is a specification. If you must build a healthy relationship with him, he has a specification. You can't live anyhow. You can't be pleasing the word anyhow. In the book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 14, 1 John 2, verse 14, he says something in verse 15. Let me go to verse 15. He said, do not love the word or anything in the word. If anyone loves the word, the love of the father is not in him. Is he saying you must not do anything in the word? No. While he was going, he said, Father, Lord, I pray for this one. Even though they are in the word, they are not of the word. What is he saying? Don't copy the word. Don't behave like them. Somebody said, you need the wisdom of the world. You don't need the wisdom of the world. You need the wisdom of God. The world is supposed to learn from you. You're supposed to be a good example to the world. You must not be a copier of the word. That is what he's saying, that when you copy the word, they mess up my plan in your life. Many times, the word we said, until you go this way, then God said, you don't need to go that way. Just go straight. I can still take you to where you are going. You are not of the word. You are of God. So you must know this very important. I said, don't copy the word. He said, friendship with the word is enmity with him. What is he saying? That you want to be in a relation with him? I must be your coordinator of life. You must acknowledge me in all your ways. I must guide your steps. Now, why, why are we talking about this in the, uh, towards the end of the year? The reason is this. That you look at your life from January to now. Why am I where I am? And his plan for me has not changed. Why have I not manifest what he said in my life? So we can recheck ourselves. Is my relationship with God still great? He told Abraham after 23 years, he said, listen, my covenant with you still stands. He said, listen, walk before me and be perfect. What I promise you have not changed. Can we check ourselves back? Why are things not working? Can we check our relationship with God? Not with man now. Because if your relationship is good with God, it will make your enemy, your problem... To, be, to walk in your favor. So we need to check that is very important. And look what he said in the Act 20 verse uh, 32b. He said, even though I commit you to God, which is able to do what? To build you up. To be what? To build you up. Why? Encourage you when you are discouraged. To pull you up when, when everybody run away from you. To show you the right way when it seems there's nothing is working. And to give you an inheritance among all the, 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 the word, which are sanctified, not just what the word is giving you, but my own inheritance. You see, all this inheritance we're running after. Many of us were running after the money, running after the fame, running after things. And it said in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 3 to 4, it said, I know that you know that all these things are pagan. People that don't know me are running after. But I also can give it to you. It says something very powerful in the book of James, chapter 3, chapter 4, verse 4. It said, You are daughters. Do you not know that friendship with the world is an hostility with God? Why do you did use the word adulterous? Uh, adulterous, somebody that is adulterous is someone that I've married and is running after other women or men. What God is saying that you are married to me. Why are you still in love with things of the world? Why don't you ask me? Why are you still in love with things that is not of me? That's what is just saying there to you. It's not saying you are, you are committing adulterous spiritually because anytime your focus is on the word, God is jealous. He will make everything around you to fail. Do you know many of us make our helper to, not to help us? The moment you see your helper as God, God make them not to help you. Many times you focus on one that is the one that will help me. God will make that person intentionally disappoint you. Focus on him, the author and finisher what? 
of your faith. In the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 20, 32, he said, Pagans are running after all those things. I know you need it, but if you can build relationship with me, seek me first. Seek me first. Seek me first. And my righteousness and every other thing I will have to you. Tell somebody I need a relationship with God. Say that to that person, I need a relationship with God. What are the benefits of your relationship with God? What are the benefits? Number one, to show you his plan. You need him to show you his plan. You don't know. To show his plan. You thought you know. You don't know. You don't know. His sister was sick recently. And she's still, she's still sick. She was healthy. She's a medical doctor. Very, very wonderful medical doctor. She's strong. Went home for burial. They said they are doing burial. Came back. By the time they know what is coming back, coming back home to, to America, within two weeks, he's a medical doctor. Find out that the two kidneys are packed up. He's on dialysis now. You don't know. You thought you know. You don't know. The only one that can know is God. You thought you are wise. It's only God that wise. Uh, you've not seen battle. May you not see battle. Yeah. Some of you don't know battle. That's why you sometimes when we're praying, you don't pray. May you not see battle. You need him to show you. He says something in the book of Isaiah 45, verse 2. He says, I will go before thee, and I will remove every hindrance before thee. He said, I will break in pieces the gate of brass, and I will cut asunder the irons of... You, you need God. Tell somebody, I need God. That's somebody I need God. And, and that's why I'm so scared of us. We are so scared of human beings than being scared of God. We honor human beings than honoring God. The one that holds your life. The year is coming to an end. Do you know he can do anything for you? You need him. The moment you have healthy relationship, he will show you the plan. In the book of Deuteronomy 29, verse 29, says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. There are some things that are secret that belong to our God. It said, But those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever. When you are in relationship with God, He open your heart. Have you never noticed sometimes God will just say, Praise me? Has it happened to you sometimes? You just say, Can you fast and pray? As God woke you up at midnight and said, Can you, be, can you just pray? Some battle you are going to, you don't even know you are fighting battle, but it just woke you up to be praying because it seems that enemy wants to touch you. And by the time you wake up and just say, Lord, thank you, thank you. The angel of the Lord just surrounds you. There are things you go through that you don't know, but he fight for you. What are the benefits of creating relationship with God? Number two, hmm. it directs you to where he has placed your blessing. It directs you to where he has placed your blessing. He will direct you. He is the lamp to your path. He is the one to direct you. If you are waiting for man to direct you, it's an error. And I said this to people that want to marry sometime. Your joy is not in the hand of your spouse. It's in the hand of God. And that is why you have to build your heart very well. And build your life to accommodate God. So strong. So when you get into that relationship... He begins to guide you. Even then, it seems as if you are losing your joy. But you are not losing your hope in him. And he brings you back to where he wants you to be. He directs you to where your blessing is. You are looking for a good husband. Stop looking to man. Look up to him. He will direct them to you. You are looking for a good wife. He will direct them to you. And not everyone that is in church are good husband. I don't know if you know that. Not everyone that you are looking at as a good wife also. No, devil also come to church. You need God to direct you. Because I'm preaching doesn't make me a child of God. Because devil also preach. That is why God wants us to know. He said that that day, many people will say, in my name, in my name, you hear people say, I don't know you. You walk out of iniquity. Go out with them. Because I'm speaking in tongues doesn't make me an angel. That is why you need God to direct you. You need God to guide you. You need God to sustain you. What benefit do you get when you have relation with this God? Hmm. What do we do? It will make your enemy to be at peace with you. That's what he said in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7. He said, when a man's way are pleasing to God. Not pleasing, pleasing to God. So every day your way has to be pleasing to him. Pleasing to God. Bible said it makes your enemy to be at peace. Enemy is not human being. Sometimes enemy is not human being. Sometimes you might be your own enemy. Enemy is not human being most of the time. 
enemy could be some things that is affecting your mind. So it will make what is affecting your mind to work for your good. So enemy could be human being also. But he said, if your way is pleasing me all the time, I fight for you. If your way is pleasing me all the time, I stand for you. Can the church desire to give themselves to Christ? Can the church have healthy relationship with God, not with man? You know, I have pity sometimes. Someone will be saying, eh, Pastor, they just step on me. I'm not coming to that church again. That's okay. It's not, it's not an issue. But don't miss your relationship with God. I have no problem people leaving. But I have problem if you leave God. If people leave you, it's not important. But if God leaves you, you are in trouble. There's not a big deal about it. God must not leave you. You need a strong relationship with God. You need a strong relationship with God. Um, I, I, let, me, let me give you one Bible verse and we're, we're going to pray. Romans 8, 31, verse 32, it said, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? That means if God is for you, nothing can stand against you. Tell somebody beside you, build a healthy relationship with God. You see, if you don't build a healthy relationship with him, one of the few things that will happen to you is that you might not be able to fulfill your destiny. Because, listen, the moment you break relationship with your destiny, it will be hard for you to make anything happen. And many times, many of us break relationship with God, with ourselves, with our expectation. You ask somebody, where are you going? He doesn't know. What do you want to achieve in life? He doesn't even know. What do you want to become? You know what has happened? Your relationship with God has been broken. Because if your relationship with him, it will keep on guiding you. Joseph, wake up. You are sleeping. Joseph, one person is coming. Your helper is coming. Connect him. Do you know it's God that lets you know that somebody is your helper, that you is hold that person tight? And some, sometimes when your helper comes, sometimes they don't want to stay with you. Most helper that help you is by force. Some of, some of them doesn't have choice. God has to tell them, you have to help that boy. He's by choice. Have you heard that woman? He said, it's only little flour and little oil left for me and my son to eat. The prophet said, <laughs> if you read that Bible verse, you will cry. He said, do my home for this. Is it not a selfish act? <laughs> if it's you, what will you do? I just told you it remained little flour and oil. You said I should do your own. You didn't even pity the little boy. You said, do my own first. But the woman knew that the person that is talking is not ordinary. If I give him the remaining one, he can still provide. And Bible said, this is the only woman, never lack. Remember that woman that's owing, that's have problem? Prophet Elijah said, go and get every bottle you can get. You are in debt, go and get. Any oil you can get, be pouring. She made a big mistake. Just got a few bottles. Bible said when he was pouring, the oil is still remain. The moment there's no more to pour, the oil stop. Why do you increase your faith? Increase your faith. When you break relationship with God, life becomes difficult. That's why you look for different other ways to please him. Different other ways to move forward. Is the author and finisher of your faith. That's somebody beside you, you need God. That's somebody you need God. <laughs> Lastly, how do you maintain relationship with him? Because you have to maintain it. And what mess up many, many marriages is because we don't maintain our relationship. Uh, when you are going after that guy, that woman, we are all cutting each other. If you see every day, you will buy McDonald's sometimes. I'm just coming from work. I bought, I bought to McDonald's. You will buy card. <laughs> you buy flour. Even though some, some of our women doesn't uh, appreciate flour. So. <laughs> I'm not talking to you now. So you buy. The moment we got married, we just forget about what we're doing. That makes the relationship so interesting. We forget the way we love. We forget the way we smile with each other anymore. We get ourselves preoccupied with different things. You see, what you are doing in the first instant is what maintains that relationship to that. You must not stop. The day you stop, that relationship begins to have problems. The day you stop the way you communicate, the way you talk. Before we marry, I marry my wife, we might be on the phone. We should be calling me sometime, 10 o'clock. We won't leave for, I said, go and sleep at 3 a.m. I'm going to work. <laughs> Sometimes, because I want to repeat the same thing now, it's not easy. I have a lot of things I have to do some work. <laughs> but don't you know those are the, those things that help your marriage? That's why I make up my mind every year you must have three vacations. The vacation is not about to get yourself re reunited together. 
Even if it is for two days to get yourself talk together again, you will fight. I've even went to vacation sometimes, you fight coming back. <laughs> ah, you see, you can hear them. <laughs> went on one vacation, we have to fight uh, from the airport. <laughs> on box on this. And I said, what type of devil is this? We came here to enjoy ourselves, we fight too. <laughs> but at least we went out. Now that fighting is the... It's part of it, what you have been bottling that you didn't release all this, why? And now you go and you release it on each other. And when you come back home, you smile again. The same thing with God. Don't forsake your first love for God. Don't let anybody affect you to love God the way you love him in the beginning. Now, I've heard people say that. People say that, am I, am I the one that key God? Every time I'm walking in the house of God, every time I'm giving. Yeah, I've heard it in this place. So some people are complaining, are you the only one every time you are giving? You see, some people, devil sends some people here also to discourage you. And I, you have to know it. There are devils everywhere. They know that if you can do it, your life will go forward. And you never know who they assign to you. They might be your best friend. And why is it only you giving all the time? Why are you praying like that? Ah, you didn't tell him that you came from a hard family. <laughs> uh, because you got to America and everything is looking sooty for you. You thought it's sooty. No, no, no. Don't break your relationship with God. Tell somebody, don't break your relationship with God. Maintain it. How do you maintain it? Have faith in God. Don't listen to what devil is saying that it's not possible. Don't listen to that what devil is saying that your marriage will break. Don't listen to what devil is saying that you cannot make it in life. You see, sometimes you can be beaten, but that does not mean the end of everything. He said, the righteous man falls seven times and rise again. There's nothing wrong in falling. You can still rise again. Have faith in God that he can restore. Have faith in God that he can repair. Have faith in God that can take you to where you are going. Don't look at the age. He's able to do it. That's what he's able to do it. Can you ever say he's able to do it? How do you maintain your relationship with God? Uh, learn to please God, not man. Please him. Please him. Learn to please him. You see, pleasing God is very tough. Many of you have blamed Abraham what he did. But if you find yourself in what Abraham found himself in, will you be able to please God? Learn to please God, not man. Please God. Please God. Why do you have to please him? Because he's the author and finisher of your face. He has power over your life. He has power over your destiny. Learn to please him. Men might talk you down. Let God talk you up. He said, let the weak say, I am strong. Even though you see yourself, we tell yourself, I am strong in God. Please him. Do his will. Don't do as the people in the world are doing it. They might not like it. It might not be, it might not be things that is invoked. But the moment you please him, it makes other things work for you. Learn to please him. Uh, be spiritually minded. That is how to maintain the relationship. Because you are not, the God you are serving is not canon. If you want to maintain your life with him, you have to be spiritually minded. Every time be thinking about your spiritual growth. How you can live for God. How you can do the will of God. Be spiritual. And sometimes spiritually minded cannot happen easily. That is why he said, do not neglect the gathering of the brethren. There are some times that your spirit is weak. But because Mr. Bam Dele's spirit is high, when we come together and pray, his spirit will energize my spirit again. Iron sharpen iron. We energize ourselves through our spiritual mind. You have to increase. Don't let devil tell you that it's over for you. Tell somebody that will make it. Tell yourself, I will make it. Lastly, learn how to praise God. Praise Him. God hates it when you are complaining. All complainers are always granted. But everyone that knows how to thank God, their tank is always full. Learn how to thank God. Uh, you might not have the food. Thank Him that you are still living. Uh, things might go on, still thank Him. When you thank Him, you can never remain the same. I want you to maintain a healthy relationship with him. Are you ready for that this morning? Rise up on your feet. Ooh.